Well, hello. Well, you might notice that I'm wearing a little bit of bling today. Woohoo! <laughs> so the question is, what does it take to be a musician in today's world and to be successful in the music business? You might want to add some bling to that. <laughs> well, I'm Glory St. Germain and super excited. We have a very, very special guest today, Rosemary Siemens, an international violin sensation. And welcome, Rosemary, to our ultimate uh, music interviews. Thank you so much. So excited to be here. Well, I am just absolutely thrilled. I know we've got a few surprises coming down the pathway today. And uh, we're going to talk about what role, other than musician, do you have to play in your business, which is big today, right? Totally. What, what keeps you motivated, uh, how to learn, you know, what is your actual goal and how to achieve it. So we've got a lot of things we're going to talk about today. But I think we should start with, Rosemary, how did you get started in music? Like, what's your story? So I grew up in a very small town in Manitoba and uh, called Plum Coulee. And my mom, I remember my first memory was me on, on a little stacking stool in my kitchen and my mom saying, do you want to play the violin? And I was like, sure. And uh, she actually noticed that I was singing like perfectly in tune at age one, two. And so she knew that there was a gift there. So she wanted to hone in on that. And so, and she started me on piano when I was three. And so she found a teacher. It was not easy to find a teacher because we were in a rural, rural community. So we had to drive quite a ways and found a teacher to start me on violin at three. And um, so that's where it all started. Wow. And uh, and then years of practicing and lessons. She would drive me to lessons three to four times a week, an hour and a half drive each way, if you can imagine. Wow. And, um, and then I ended up doing my undergrad in music and violin at University of British Columbia. And then I did a master's at the University of Miami. And um, and then I did another degree after that. I could have been a surgeon by this time because I just done <laughs> so many years of school. And uh, and then I think what what I started doing some albums then, but what really kind of started me touring and stuff was that I got a call from the original Canadian tenors and I started touring with them. And that's what really got me going on the road and stuff like that. But you know what, when I was a kid, I was always in a, in a children's choir, the Mennonite children's choir. And you know, we toured all over the world. We went to Israel, to Asia, to Germany, everywhere. And I think that's when the love of like travel shopping and eating out and all these things were just like, I love them all. So I knew it. I wanted to be a musician. <laughs> you know, we've got so many musicians on our call today and we have teachers. And I think in the chat box, if you can just share with us, if you are a um, teacher or if you are a musician, let's just see uh, what we've got out there today because we really want to address that. And, you know, it's interesting, Rosemary, you said, you know, you drove an hour and a half to your teacher. And, and I think that sometimes we don't even realize that we see musicians performing and yet how did they get there? It was through the dedicated parents, but also oh. through finding the good fit as a teacher, right? That's gonna yeah. really be the connection that's gonna help you. So what would be you know, your best piece of advice for aspiring musicians? Oh man, I think, I think the number one thing in, in from everything I've done in my career would be to never burn a bridge. I, uh, when I was at the University of Miami, I was working at a church. I was playing piano and violin at this church. And the church leader, she was an amazing musician and, and we really connected well. And she told me, you know, when you leave here, when I leave here, let's always keep in touch and I'll always call you for gigs and stuff like that. And I was like, great. And so years later, I was in, back in Vancouver where I live now and um, I get a call and it's from this lady, Candice Wickey. And she says, are you sitting down? And I said, I said, yeah, I says, what's going on? She says, do you want to play at Carnegie Hall? And I was like, oh my gosh, yes. Who would have known that she would have gone to New York and started working for Carnegie Hall. And this one connection at this, at this unlikely church in Florida ended up having me play Carne Carnegie Hall numerous times. It ended up, that's how I got to play at the Vatican for the first time. I was the first violinist to ever play at the Sistine Chapel at the Vatican. And so connections for me have brought me almost all of my opportunities, which I think a lot of people don't think about it, but a huge part of being a musician is networking. Yes. And yeah, you just never want to burn a bridge ever. 
And I think an interesting thing too, and I saw the video when you were performing in Rome and I was just like, I think I watched it like 10 times yeah. because I was just like, it was so amazing, like so amazing. And that whole story, I mean, I, I know you did a post on Facebook and I actually read the whole story about how it all happened. And that must have been such a high, right? Just to going, I actually did that. Totally. And the fun thing is like taking people on the journey with with me the fact that you can do that in today's world is so cool because i mean to just experience it by yourself is amazing but to share yeah. it with other people is just so much cooler yes i think so and you know when we think about you know um, musicians even you know 20 years ago networking was a whole different ball game you had to just literally be on the road and on the radio and i know you've done a lot of tours and you're yeah. recording um and releasing your albums and and actually still engaging in the radio but what uh, so other than your role as a musician um what else do you have to do like in the business because being a musician you know we can practice 10 hours a day uh but what else do you have to do in the business to to be successful and you obviously are very successful i think a lot of people don't realize what all goes into being a musician in today's world because it used to be that people would have their record label and then the record label would do all these things for them but now a lot of people are just independent musicians and making a living of it as i am i mean i have a team with a manager and an agent and stuff but like i'm building websites i'm doing social media i'm booking shows i'm yeah. writing songs i'm recording music promoting my music booking tours researching how to do the best music videos practicing like it just it never ends it's a full full full-time job and people i think have no idea what actually all goes into it yeah i often wonder how you manage to do all that because you are very active on on uh, facebook and sharing your stories and it's so engaging and of course your adorable little guy Aww. theodore who <laughs> I mean, I think we were all in shock when you revealed the story about, oh, by the way, I had a baby. And we're like, what? <laughs> I know. And between my husband and I, who's he's a, a world-renowned saxophone player, between the two of us, while I was pregnant, we did 175 shows in 100, 100 cities. That's and cool. kept it a tried to keep it a secret anyway. And, and, and did the odd person go, are you, um, or did they not want to say anything? I think I had, I had, to one or two people on social media and i don't know if i had anyone come up to me in person i don't think i'm sure a few people thought it when they saw me especially late yeah. but um very few people came up to me and and said that but uh the reason we kept it a secret was just it was actually i was getting a lot of calls for work when i was about to be pregnant and close to it and i thought you know what i'm feeling really good and i just didn't want that to change and i wanted to be working right right away after and so and since I had the baby, I had a show a week after, and I've done about 25 shows since I had the baby. So, oh. and I had him in September. So, <laughs> that's just amazing. He's very good. Come, he's the backstage baby. So, <laughs> yeah, he's the backstage. I think everybody gets to know him. So, what you know, you've done like obviously that millions of shows and, and, you know, extensively traveled around the world. What keeps you motivated in music? Like, what is the thing that keeps you going? Well, I constantly, like, I think, um, my, my motto for 2019 is to dream it and to do it. I think to keep on dreaming and keep on, on having goals that are almost unattainable, you know, that's a huge part of it for me. And just, I think like what makes me love music so much and why I do it is because, because I get to share my story and I want to touch people through music. And I, I try and do, I try and do special things for people all the time. I, I did a really cool, you know, I was in Cracker Barrel restaurant. It's like a home cooked restaurant in the States. And I, yeah. uh, I was sitting there having my meal and and I saw this man that kind of seemed lonely and I saw him wearing a veteran's hat and I was going to leave and as I was leaving he just said something to me he says are you playing a show in Wisconsin Dells and I said no I said I'm off to the next city and I left and my parents were with me and I was out going out the door and I said dad I feel like I should go play something for that man he seemed really down and he says if you feel it go do it and so I went back to him and I said are you a veteran and he said yeah I am I says would you mind if I played something for you and he says, no, I would love it. And so there in that Cracker Barrel restaurant, I played this man, America the Beautiful. And you guys and the whole kitchen staff came out. And, you know, he sent me an email the next day. And he just said, he said, Rosemary, he says, you have no idea what kind of pain I was in at that point, emotionally and physically. And he says, I prayed for some some of that relief, like some something to relieve that pain. And he says, and you were the answer to that prayer. And I think moments like that, that we just take the time to, to just 
if people are in need to do do what we can, everyone can do something different. You know, my gift is to to share music, right? And I think that's just more payment than than a lot of other gifts that a lot of other gigs, you know, when you get to do something special for someone. And so that's really why I do it is to, to touch people. And so I'm just yeah. thankful that I have a job that allows me to do that. Yeah. You, you know, and you are so special and so kind and uh, you know, it, people do, they're so moved by music. Like it can change your mood in a heartbeat. You know, if you're feeling really sad and depressed, I mean, if you put on some music that can just uplift you or, or listen to your favorite song, it, it brings back memories. It is such a powerful thing that you know when you share that with people i've seen you performing in so many i love your impromptu just show up with your violin and start totally. playing. It, <laughs> it brings so much joy to everything you know so you talked a little bit about 2019 what is your goal for 2019 do you have anything specific and perhaps in our chat box i see gracia says hi rosemary <laughs> Hi, Gracie. Hi, Grace. Um, so um, go ahead and, and uh, feel free to put a question in the chat box if, you, if you'd like to uh, ask Rosemary something. But what is your goal coming up for 2019? What's, what's coming up in the future here? Well, I have a lot of things going on, but I think my big goal, I want to, uh, I just got a U.S. agent, so we're going to be touring through the U.S. a lot. But my goal is to play the Grand Ole Opry. That is one thing I want to do. And, um, and I my long-term goal is I'd like to have a PBS special like uh, Rosemary and Friends and bring all the different people that I've met throughout my career so far, like the, yes. my, some of my favorites, and do a PBS special like that and like share people's stories and then bring them one-on-one -on -one with me on stage. And you know, I, it's something really cool that happened, it's probably about two years ago now, but um, through Facebook, I saw this guy, Charles Ritchie on the organ. He was he went viral on the organ. He's like unbelievable. And so I messaged him. He plays old hymns, which I love. I grew up playing in the church, and that's a big part of um, how I learned to play as well. And uh, I messaged him. I said, I would love to do a duo with you sometime. And he says, well, if you're ever in the area, let me know. So I was in Jackson, Tennessee, and he was close by. And so I was doing a radio interview. And so he brought his organ, his, I think it was 500-pound organ, in a horse trailer. Oh, my God. <laughs> to the radio station, he hauled it in there, and we did three videos, and one of them got over a million views on Facebook, and and it was one of the coolest experiences. And I think like things like that, sharing these stories, and then bringing a person on for a song, and I, that would be my dream, and so that's what I'm working for. Aww. That sounds like a lot of fun. Well, speaking of bringing your your instruments, um, I know we want to talk about how musicians can identify their one goal and how to achieve it. But I kind of like to segue, you know, I did put on my bling. I love it. So did I. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> Ooh, she has her bling on. So could you please tell us about Sparkle and your bling? Yes, this is my violin, which I've named Sparkle. It is from 1714. Wow. And it, it was um, bought by a very generous patron and um, bought in Switzerland. And um, it is a pretty special instrument. Check it out. It's beautiful. It played, it played in King Louis the Fourteenth's orchestra, and it was actually two years, about two years ago now. It was stolen, and actually miraculously returned. So I'm very thankful to have this now. Yes, that is. And I, um, both of these were bought in Switzerland. I used to study in Switzerland in the summertime with my teacher. My teacher from the University of Miami had a place in Switzerland, and so he would have his students come there, and we would just study with him and stuff like that. And one time I was at this famous shop in um, in Switzerland, and I uh, this man actually, I was playing a concert, and this man came up to me, and he said he was taking the course with me, and he says, Rosemary, he says I'd like to buy a bow for investment purposes, and I said, great. I says we're in the best place in the world to buy instruments. I says I'll try some bows out for you, and he says you're sure, and I said yeah. So I uh, spent a day trying out bows, and. I said to this man, Peter, I said, Peter, I got the best bow for you. And he says, you're sure? And I says, yeah. And he goes, it's a gift for you. And it was a $15,000 bow. And so I've been very blessed to have amazing patrons around me that have allowed me to play on such an incredible instrument. And it makes all the difference for a musician to play on an amazing instrument. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Yeah. Are you going to uh, do a little a little tiny sparkle song for us? Oh, any favorites? <laughs> I, I love everything you play. <laughs> Um, how about like Danny Boy? Okay. <laughs> Rosemary, I love when you play. It just, you know, my my mom um, played the violin. I mean, nowhere near, not even close to what you do. But just the violin itself is so dear to my heart. Aww. And thank you so much for sharing that. I know that you've worked so so hard as a as a professional musician, but also in the music business, which is of course what we were talking about today, and just in sort of helping other musicians. Oh, we've got a comment here. It says, Eddie says, uh, he's crying on the inside. <laughs> he loves it so much. Thanks, Eddie, for that. Um, you know, what's sort of one, um, one how we can help uh, you know, we talked about how can you identify a goal and and how can you achieve it? Like if you were going to give some advice to musicians that are saying, well, you know, I'm practicing all the time. Like what's the next step? What's the path to to really making it as you have in the, in the music business? Oh, man, never stop. Never. I never stop working. I, it's, you know, they say what is luck? And I think luck is a great definition is when preparation meets opportunity. Right. Yes. I think when you actually put in the time and you keep working and you never stop, the opportunities will come. But you can't just sit in your room and just practice, you know, that it doesn't work like that. You have to put in that time, but then you got to go out and network and stuff like that, right? Yes. And, um, you know, I think also, like, I've gone through so many different phases in my life. I have so many different groups, and I, I'm now, I have a group, Rosemary and the Sweet Sound Revival, where I'm singing, I'm writing songs, and I think you find what your passion is right now. I love, I love motivational speaking. I love sharing my story. And so if I was just doing a classical show, I wouldn't be able to do that. So I morphed my show into where I can express myself and share my stories and stuff like that. And I'm singing now. And, and so I think you're going to have different in your career. I never thought I would be using my piano. I th never thought I'd be using my voice. I never thought, but I'm so thankful to my mom now that I had, 
I'm using my theory, you know, I'm, I have all these things that have built so that now I can have this kind of multifaceted career that I never thought I would have, that I can use all the things that I've worked so hard for, right? And so I think, and there's a different time for, like, when I first started, I was doing just gospel CDs, just violin, you know, and now I'm doing totally different. And so I think you have to kind of find your niche and see what you love and then see if there's an audience for it. Usually there's an audience for it. You can always find in today's world with social media, you can find an audience for almost anything, right? Yes. And so I think, but you got to put in the time and dedication, but then um, follow through and uh, yeah. I think, I think that really is, is the key. You know, we've, we've talked about, about musicians and the practicing. So follow through is the key opportunities to take them. And, you know, uh, you know, I know I speak for you and I, we've, we've been blessed with opportunities, but we've also taken action on those opportunities and, and, uh, and always with passion and always with a purpose to serve. Totally. And, you know, I think the musicians and, you know, speaking of serving, once our, our chat is done, I will put some um, notes back in the chat so that uh, teachers and musicians can reach out to you on your social media page. I know the, the video you did with Hallelujah has over 18 million views on it. I mean, that's an amazing accomplishment mm -hmm. to think that 18 million people plus watched your video and I know probably five million of those were were me but <laughs> because I loved watching that video so much um but I do want to you know share with people that that um I am all about the education uh, which is where Rosemary talked about and if you have an interest in learning more about that you can just type in the chat box um master keys and um my assistant Sheena can send you the link to uh to the upcoming webinar that we've going on next week um, if you want to know more about rosemary you can just tap uh, type in rosemary or uh, type in musician whatever you want and uh, we'll make sure to link you up with that with the uh, the proper things so that you can uh, access that information because um, i think that's one of the greatest things is just you know uh, watching you and of course you know you and I come from the same background I you know my my family was also from Plum Cooley so it's yeah. kind of cute I, I looked it up in the in the book and I went well look at that we're actually cousins sort of through a couple really? of different things but yeah it's really really fun yeah. and I just wanted to say thank you so much Rosemary for sharing your incredible story and uh you know of course I love watching you perform and and hopefully you'll be coming to Winnipeg it's kind of time for you to come on back this way I know I'm in Steinbeck February 22nd but not in Winnipeg then but hopefully soon yes well we'll have to make sure that 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 you come around this way. And for anyone that is looking uh, for, I, as I said, I'll put the show notes in after we wrap up today. So you can actually click on that and, and it says all the places that you're playing right on your website. Yes. Yeah, you betcha. Yeah. Okay, so we'll, we'll wrap up with that. Is there a little story about how did the thing about bling get started? Because Oh I actually my word, my grandma loved bling. She loved shopping. She had clothes everywhere. It was amazing. And then my mom always wore bling. I remember my friends always like making me fun, making fun about it to me. And uh, I guess it got passed down the bloodline <laughs> to me. And, um, you know, I think I'm a dichotomy of my parents. My mom is like, loves shopping, loves bling. And then my dad's a farmer. He, he's 81 years old, still farms full time on our century farm. And I think I'm the dichotomy of the two worlds, right? This like loving travel shopping and then this kind of simple, simple life girl. And so I'm mixed between the two. And so I wrote a song you can see, you can actually see our hometown um, in the music video. Um, it's the story of my home, of my life really. And it's called Barefoot and Bling. You can find it on YouTube. Uh, check it out and subscribe there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I love the barefoot and bling. I've watched that one too. It's really incredible. Well, thank you so much, Rosemary, for today. Uh, I'm sure that uh, we're going to have a, a a great following, and people are going to enjoy watching your uh, your music. If they can't see you live, at least they can head over to your website and your YouTube page and and catch all your amazing videos and comment and things on your Facebook page as well. So awesome! Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So have yourself an amazing day and uh, keep sparkle uh, sparkling. Will do. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank you. See you next time. Bye. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>